Hey folks, Quillyteen here, and welcome to what will hopefully be a relatively short tutorial in Unity here, because we're not going to be writing code live. But it's going to involve cutting holes into things using funky tricks. Basically, uh, for those of you who have ever watched any of my stuff, you know I am obsessed with pinball. I love pinball. I've got a couple of pinball machines. If I go into a pub and there's a pinball machine, I must, must play it. Um, as well as I've tried making my own virtual pinball games a few times. Um, and it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy it, and I, I I don't know, it's one of my passions for sure. But one of the problems I've always had when trying to do a virtual pinball table involves any time you need to cut a hole in the surface of the table. Um, and there's two examples where that might happen. You can have something like this, which is sort of a kick-out hole or a saucer, depending on exactly how it's implemented and how it looks. This is a very common thing. Um, it's sort of just a little shallow depression here um, where your ball can get sort of caught there and normally I am overemphasize the depth of this hole over here if I go and remove the maximization I overemphasize the depth of the hole over here so I could test some things um, normally that extra little dipped area wouldn't go quite as deep um, and then you'd have a, like a little a little push button sensor in here so when the ball rests on it the game knows that the ball is on top and then you know it scores some points and then at some point it kicks out the ball with just a, like a little a little spring well not a spring lever it's a solenoid that activates and kicks the ball out in some direction okay there's that and then there's the also like just a full deep hole that your ball can fall into and again you know score some points or it locks the ball for a multi ball or something but then eventually kicks the ball out in some fashion. All right, so there's a couple of different variants like that. And this is one of the things that was really annoying to me during sort of virtual pinball development because I developed a bunch of tricks to, wrap, to be able to rapidly design and iterate my overall pinball table layout in Blender. Uh, tricks for the, the you know, sort of the, 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 I don't know, the table or the level geometry itself, right? Like all the curves and corners and things like that. Really easy to do, as well as I developed some tricks to quickly build ramps um, and to be able to iterate on those. Like if I built the ramp and it turns out, oh, you know, it's a little too steep or this corner is a little too sharp, or I want it to not end up um, over here, but I want to end up like five centimeters over to the right so it can do another thing. It's, it's very easy for me to just go into Blender easily slide the ramp over or slide the, the level geometry around um, and then bring that back into Unity. It was like two seconds I would be able to rapidly um, iterate through these different changes. The one exception were cases where you had holes. The most common way to cut holes in your geometry is to do something like, for example, have your have your tabletop surface in, um, in, in Blender um, and then maybe uh, create a, a cylinder object where you want the hole to be, then do like a Boolean subtract operation, which will cause, you know, whatever your 3D modeling program is to cut that cylinder shape out from your tabletop surface. And the way that happens is it would actually sort of create a series of vertices on your table over here, uh, which of course would cause, instead of your tabletop being just two triangles, it would cause your tabletop basically to shatter into a bunch of little triangles like this around the hole, right? You'd get this sort of, yeah, this sort of fan effect. I mean, I suppose I could demonstrate it, but um, I have PTSD from doing that, so I don't want to do that, right? So it sort of shatters like that, and that's fine, except in the case where um, there's a few, there's tons of complicated or, or gotchas if you do that. For example, if you have multiple holes in your tabletop, well then, if you have another hole over here, so this one's already got a crazy fan shape of triangles coming out from it, and then you cut out another hole over here, and then your fan shape gets really, like, you basically start shattering your table instead of having two triangles, you get hundreds or maybe thousands of triangles um, to be able to cope with all these holes poking into the surface, which has huge implications for the physics engine optimization. It gets a lot slower to deal with the physics of the ball rolling across your tabletop surface versus just this setup with two triangles, for example. Um, and also texturing and lighting Every now and again, you can get all sorts of weird artifacts if, you know, everything's not exactly perfect and even, which is kind of easy to break if you're you're counting on your 3D modeler to cut those things in properly. So it can be a big problem. And worst of all, it becomes almost impossible to move the hole afterwards. Um, you can't just really grab those vertices and move because that will really break the triangles in a horrible way. So what you have to do is sort of like um, revert to a flat tabletop and... Um, do the whole thing again with your cylinders and the sub the, the boolean subtraction and it just it doesn't help for fast iteration and what would be particularly nice if instead of having to go back to our 3d modeling program if we could just move the hole in unity which is exactly the setup that i have going on here i am moving the hole in unity and if you've been looking this box here only has two triangles it doesn't have um it doesn't have, like, it's not being cut in any kind of way 
whatsoever. So how is that possible? The hole is, I mean, there's definitely a hole. What's the deal here? Well, the deal is that we're using a combination of tricks to make this uh, render like the hole was here and not render the table where it is. In fact, it becomes quite obvious if I go and the actual kick out hole graphics, if I turn off the mesh render, okay, and you look over on the right, we see a black hole here. This is a spot the table simply doesn't render here. What we do is we render the table um, first. No, no, no. We actually render the hole first. We rendered like normally this, this kick out hole graphic. We render this first. Then we render the table, but, um, but the table doesn't render here. And that's mostly because of the depth mask. So if I turn off the depth mask mesh renderer, then the table renders all the way there. The depth mask stops the table from rendering here um, and making and hiding our hole, right? If I didn't have this, if I turned off the depth mask, renderer, you can see the table would render all the way through our little graphic. I've got some bits of this kick out hole that extend a little bit above the table, but we wouldn't be able to see the hole. The depth mask makes sure that we don't see the hole over there. Now, just using a depth mask by itself does not solve the entirety of the problem because normally, let's say my ball over here, I'm going to duplicate this ball. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it over here and I'm going to bring it down right into the hole basically over here right so it's just sitting inside of the hole a wee bit um and that looks fine the ball looks okay but it's actually using a slightly different it's using a special material if i were to make just a um uh, let's make it just a generic material so this is just a generic material and let's say i apply that to the ball then notice the ball is getting cut so this depth mask would normally stop the ball from rendering properly when it's sitting in the hole. So the ball itself needs a special shader as well. Now these are very simple shaders. It just has to do with what order things get drawn in and who ignores what. So we're gonna take a look at that in a second. Now, the rendering part of it is only half the equation. The other half of the equation is the physics because remember the tabletop surface is still here. So why does this ball fall into the table when it's over the hole? Like it's technically, again, if I go and I don't render the depth mask, right? The tabletop surface over here, and I let the ball roll, what's gonna happen is when it gets over here, it's actually gonna fall through the table and sit in the hole instead. And why is that? All right, well, we'll deal with that uh, secondly. First thing we're gonna do is take a look at the shaders. Now, these materials, um, use these custom shaders. These custom shaders though are exactly, let's see here, ball shader, kick out shader, um, and the third one will be depth mask. The first two, the, the shader I use for the kick out hole is exactly the same as the standard, standard shader, right? If we look at the table, um, the table uses a standard shader, right? This is the tabletop material over here. Uh, all I did is color sort of brown to make it look more woodsy or whatever. Um, it just uses the standard shader, okay? Standard shader. And if you can see over here on the right, that's what a standard shader looks like. If you look at ball, there you go. Still the standard shader. Looks exactly the same as before. And kick out hole, standard shader. So all I did is I used the standard shader, which you can't, it's not the same as going create shader, standard surface shader. This is not the one. This is not the one. None of these are the one. You're going to have to do the thing again where you go to the Unity download archive and download the original shader files, and then you have access to be able to copy and paste the original shader, which is all I did. So the standard shader, I copy and pasted it into here. And then what we did is I messed with the render order. That was step number one over here. This Q tag, which doesn't exist in the standard shader, normally the default is to Q is to build or to render everything on geometry. If you've got your render type set to opaque, it will render geometry. This d determines the order in which your objects get rendered. Most of your objects all get rendered during the geometry step and they get rendered in some order. There's optimization based on distance from camera and things like that that can happen. But basically, everything on the default geometry queue will render at the same time. If you send your render type to transparent, then that automatically sets your queue actually to a later queue because the idea is you render everything that's opaque, 
Then you render everything that's transparent. That way, if there's something behind the transparent object, it's already been rendered, so you'll be able to see it. Um, and because of like Z indexings and things like that, if you were to render the transparent stuff first, then um, if something was going to render behind the transparent object, it would say, oh, I'm, I'm actually behind something that's already been rendered, therefore I won't render myself. Unless your uh, transparent object doesn't write to the Z buffer, but that's a whole other thing. Anyway, so what's happening here is I'm saying I want my kickout hole to render earlier. In fact, the ball is actually the thing that renders first. The very first thing we do in the game is we render the ball. Um, and I, I'm trying to remember if that was important for the kickout hole. I guess it's not actually. Now that I think about it, um, the the ball and the kickout hole could render at the exact same step. That would be fine. If I go and change this to geometry two, we're gonna be okay. Pretty sure. Let's hit play. Yeah, because that's fine. So the ball and the kickout thing render each other first. What's important is that they render before. And other than that, they're perfectly vanilla, normal shader. What's important is that they render before the depth mask. So this is actually a very common thing. You can find it on Unity Wiki. It's like the simplest thing in the universe. All it does is we set when we want to render. In this case, I want to render one before the normal geometry. So the normal geometry, which is the table, we're to render right before that. But this is rendering after the kickout hole and the ball. This is not going to draw anything. It literally draws nothing to the screen but it does write to the Z buffer. So the Z buffer is the thing that just tracks how far away from a ca the camera all the triangles are. So what this is doing for us is it's saying that my depth mask over here, which you can't see, how do I get it to look? If I were to go and add, say, a mesh collider here and then turn off the renderer, there we go. So um, this here, you can, you can see um, some object over here. This is my depth mask object. It's just a cylinder, okay? It sits basically flush with the tabletop. Technically, to avoid some Z fighting, I moved it like 0 0.01 units just vertically above. So it sits just above the tabletop here. And it goes down deep enough to, to cover everything else that's going on, okay? Um, and, and hide everything there. And its job is simply, it's not to be visible, it's simply to say, there is an object here and nothing can render behind me. When the tabletop tries to render in this spot, it says, oh, should I draw my pixels here? Oh, no, no, there's something that's rendered on top of me over here, therefore I won't. And it's not the kickout hole, okay? This kickout hole doesn't matter in any way whatsoever. It's simply this depth mask. If I turn off the renderer, the table goes well. If I turn it on right here, the rendering system has been told something has already been painted here and it's closer to the camera than, than the tabletop, so I'm not going to draw this here, right? It's the same thing as if there was an actual cylinder here, except we don't actually draw the cylinder. So the depth mask job is to do that. So now if I, let's just remove the mesh collider because I don't actually want it to exist. And if I repaint the kickout hole. So remember the kickout hole and the ball get drawn before the depth mask kicks in. Because otherwise, if the order was the other way around, if I went and went over here and told the depth mask to render sooner, let's say at minus 10 over here, then it would now render before the kickout hole and the ball. So if the ball rolls in there, um, all the physics would still work the same way, but this blackness, like the ball is not rendering below that. Oh, you can also see the, uh, the redrawing. That's kind of a funny glitch. I love that. All right. So that's the order going on here. But this way, the ball and the shader always draw themselves. Then the depth mask kicks in and then everything afterwards will not draw behind this cylinder which is why you get the ability to look down on this hole and the tabletop doesn't render, but then you can, oops, that's not what I want to move, but then you can just move it around and it's fine. Looks great, easy, easy, easy development. Uh, if we go and brew it out over here, you can again, you can see, you can really see the area, the volume of the cylinder here, right? Because the cylinder, again, doesn't draw itself, but does say nothing behind me can be drawn. So you've got that effect, which is kind of a cool thing, but then you can actually see the uh, my actual whole thing going over here of course i don't you know paint the the front calling area anyway so that's that so if i go and move you back to the zero spot that's going to be good so that's one half of the equation the other half of the equation is okay even though the table is not being rendered here it still exists so why can the ball fall through the table at this spot into the uh, the little cutout hole let me move you over here so we don't have to wait long, as long for the ball to fall in well that is another slightly different trick what I have is I have three new 
um, layers. I have a layer called ball on table. I have a layer called ball in hole and a ball and a layer called hole. Okay. Now my table is on the default layer and what I have, and our ball starts with ball on table. Ball on table is like the normal ball behavior. Um, and what I have in this situation is in the project setting physics, um, the default layer, which is the table can collide with ball on table. Okay. But what happens is when the ball, or let's, let's switch to ball in hole. Okay. If I do that, it no longer collides with the table. And that's just the rule I put in. It's in the physics system over here. Default layer, which is the tabletop, does not collide with ball and hole. So when the ball is set to ball and hole, it doesn't collide with the table, which means over here, it falls through the tabletop, which is invisible, right? The tabletop is invisible, but it's still there. But now the ball is not colliding with that. It's simply colliding with the hole layer over here. I, I mean, I probably didn't have to go. I could have had the ball swap between default and ball and hole or something like that, but it's a little bit more clear. So the final piece in the puzzle, right? Because normally it's ball on table. The final piece of the puzzle is I have a trigger in this kickout hole over here. I have a trigger set up over here. And all it does is it's got a simple little script called change ball layer, right? It's very simple. When something enters this trigger, which is in my kickout hole, if it's got the tag player, I just tag the, the ball with the, the player tag just to set. In theory, nothing else should ever trigger this trigger, but who knows, maybe later on there'll be something else. So I wanna make sure that we're actually talking about the ball. And all I do is I switch the balls layer to what I have is this layer on enter property, which is, uh, this is the ball in hole and then ball on table. So when you enter the trigger, it changes the ball's layer to ball and hole where it no longer collides with the table. When you leave, when you leave this trigger, it puts the ball's layer back to ball on table. So it once again starts to collide with the tabletop. And as a result, whenever the ball is entering this, uh, I have to put it this way um, and put it back to an X of zero. There we go. So first the ball collides with the table, but then as soon as it enters this trigger, it no longer collides with the tabletop, which means it collides with the surface. And that's why I have this like little sort of skirt area over here. And frankly, the actual sort of saucers and kick things tend to have this little skirt here as well. It protects the tabletop, uh, makes it easier to insert the part. But it means that there's this little transition layer where here the ball is, is still in its normal status in terms of collision over here. But it can always collide with the hole. And then as it gets closer over here, it changes to a mode where it no longer collides with the tabletop. And then it can just simply roll in. And I just set the trigger to be... Actually, it could probably stand to be a little bit bigger. Well, actually, that should work perfectly fine. So that completes the illusion of this completely dynamic hole that is cut into the table, which both looks appropriate, right? It looks like there's a hole in the table, and it acts like there's a hole in the table from a physics point of view, even though, even though there's, no, there's not an actual hole there. And I think that is spiffy and a cool trick and is something that you can use for all kinds of different things. Um, you could use this to, um, to cut holes in walls, to, to be able to see through things temporarily. Like this is all at runtime as well, right? There's no reason you have to do this ahead of time. I can take this object. Oh, it's actually told to be static, so I'm not supposed to move it at runtime. But if I take off that static tag, right, and do this, right, I can, I, it's just a runtime thing. I can, I can do whatever I want with it, right? Position it over there. So there's kind of funky tricks. You do have to be worried about the order of things. Again, if something um, should be rendered past your depth mask, you have to make sure that you render that first by just messing with the order. But that's really simple little shader stuff. Anyway, I was very entertained by doing this and it solves a huge annoying problem that I've had a long, long time um, just trying to sort out. And it occurred to me, like I knew about depth masks, but I, it hadn't occurred to me that like messing with the render order to get the ball and the kick out hole geometry to render first would meet me there. I thought with just the depth mask, I'm like, no, that's not going to be enough because it's going to hide the wrong things. But as a pair, hey, that works wonderfully. Looks, it works really, really well. It's exactly what I want. I'm super happy right now. Thanks for watching. See you next time.